Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over an example problem for calculating gravitational potential energy. And what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the gravitational potential energy of this rocket. This is Elon Musk's latest SpaceX rocket, the Falcon 9. And we're going to calculate the potential energy of this rocket when it's sitting at the surface of the Earth. This rocket happens to have a mass of 549,054 kilograms. And because this rocket is going to be sent up into space, we're going to be using this equation, the more general form, not PE equals MGH, but we're going to be using this equation to calculate the gravitational potential energy. It says the potential energy is equal to negative or minus G, the gravitational constant, times the mass of one of the objects, which is the, which is the Earth, because that's what the rocket is sitting on, times the mass of the rocket divided by the distance between those two objects, the Earth and the rocket. And we'll explain what we mean by that in just a moment. Remember the gravitational constant 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared kilogram squared. The mass of the Earth M1 is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The mass of the rocket, as we said, is 549,000 and 54 kilograms and the distance between those two objects because we're using this equation not p equals mgh but this equation this is the radius the distance between the two objects and the distance between those two objects is the distance from the center of the earth so this is the radius of the earth plus the height that the object is above the surface of the earth now obviously the rocket is sitting on the surface of the earth so then the radius the distance between the two objects, it's really the distance between the center of the mass, the two objects, is just really just the radius of the Earth, the distance from the center of the Earth to the rocket, which is 6,371 kilometers, okay? That's really, in this equation, that's really the important thing you need to remember is this is not zero because it's sitting at the center of the Earth. We're going to launch this rocket in space where G is not a constant, where G will not be 9.81 meters per second squared. So therefore, we have to use this equation, not P equals MGH. So we just plug the values in. It's pretty straightforward. The potential energy is minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th times the mass of one of the objects. It doesn't matter which one we call M1 and M2. It's just the mass of each of the two objects. Usually M1, capital M, is given to the central, more massive object. And that's the mass of the Earth times the mass of the rocket, divided, as I said, the distance between them. Now, I didn't put the units on here because I didn't really have enough space. You'll notice this, uh, it, what do you call that, a constant, has the units of Newton meter squared, kilogram squared. So these are both in kilograms because they're given in kilograms. The distance has to be given in meters. Here, you know, it says kilometers, kilometers, and um, we have to convert that into meters, which is uh, times a thousand, so I put here six three seven one times ten to the third meters. That's the distance given in meters because a kilometer obviously is a thousand meters. And then we just get the answer, and we have this negative sign, and we have PE. Therefore, the potential energy of that rocket when sitting at the surface of the Earth is minus three point four four times 10 to the, mi 10 to the excuse, not minus, but 10 to the 13 joules. That's the potential energy of that rocket. Now, we have a negative sign here, and our answer has a negative sign. The answer needs to have a negative sign, and I want to just kind of clear up and talk about, as I did in the previous video where I went over an explanation where you can link to in the upper right-hand corner, what does that negative sign mean? Why negative? And let's just talk about what that is a little bit using this graph. This is a graph I talked about in the previous video, which you can link to. This is the Earth. This is kind of a graphical representation. This is the Earth. This is the potential energy. This is the distance away. And this is a graph of the potential energy with respect to the distance away from the center of the Earth. And we said we calculated as minus 3.44 times, times 10 to the 13th joules. What does that negative sign mean? Well, let's just say what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that the potential energy is less than zero. Okay, what that negative sign really means is the magnitude of the potential energy is 3.44 times 10 to the 13th joules. What the negative sign means is it really tells you that, you know, that, that thing is still bound gravitationally to the Earth. It still feels the influence of the Earth's gravity. Okay, it's also kind of, if you think about it, um, it's the amount of energy that we would have to add to that object 
to get it to a place where it had no potential energy. So if we want to get it to a place where it has no potential energy, then we would have to add 3.44 times 10 to the 13th joule because minus and a plus, the magnitude is the same, that equals zero. But what, what does that really mean? But that means that when the potential energy is zero, then the object is infinitely far away. So we've taken it away from the gravitational influence of the Earth. So when the potential energy is zero, it's infinitely far away, or we say when it's infinitely far away, and then the potential energy is zero. And that occurs right here at this point, because this point is where, where you're really far away. This is the distance. I don't know how far away necessarily this is, but this is zero. This is a distance, excuse me, infinitely far. And you can see that the potential energy is getting close to and approaching zero when you're infinitely far away. Okay, so it's important to keep that negative sign, but it's important to remember what that negative sign means. It means that the object is still kind of bound to the Earth, and it also means that if we wanted to remove it from the Earth, we would have to add that much positive energy, whether it's potential energy or kinetic energy. Okay, because that takes it to zero. Zero is when it's no energy, and that means it's infinitely far away. Okay? Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, caring, no, sharing is caring. Okay, share this video with your friends. They'll love it, I promise you. And they'll love you for sharing too. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.